Monday, March the 7th at 7 or 7 p.m. Ms. Derry, would you call the roll, please? Yes. AC Brown? Here. Ralph Meeker? Here. Bob Powell is absent. David Daniel? Here. Tim Terry? Here. Lance Terry? Lance Cora? Thank you very much. If everyone would please rise, we begin tonight with a prayer led by Jeff Ivey from the Baptist Church, uh, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance uh, to Chief Stuart Wine. Can you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, Lord, just the blessing of another day here in your creation. Lord, we thank you for this nation and uh, for this city. We thank you for the freedom that we enjoy, uh, the many blessings you've given us. Lord, we thank you for these that are serving our city. And God, tonight we pray that you give them wisdom and uh, just use them to guide our city in the direction you would want it to go. Uh, Lord, we do pray for our, our world right now and for Ukraine and for peace and uh, wisdom for, for our leaders and leaders around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> Sir. And I have a couple of things for you. One, to add 
badge you your many, many badges. This is the, the pen like I wear on my lapel. It's the Feels Like Home Greenwood pen. How old are you? 16. 16, you got a couple years before voted. You'll go ahead and swear in now to the vote. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, and I, I keep repeating myself every time I give this, but I mean it every time I give it. This, this is a key to the city. Uh, we're a small city, as you can see. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be here. Anyway, so uh, it, it doesn't open anything. You can't get City Hall, you can't get my office, uh, but my door's always open to you. But this, this truly is, represents uh, the key to the hearts of everybody in Greenwood because we sincerely thank you for what you've done, what you do, and what you're going to continue to do as a scout. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. Somebody asked me recently what was good about being mayor. That's what's good about being mayor. That's not right there. There's other things too. That's, that's one of the good stuff. Uh, this time on our agenda, I would ask the uh, council to consider, and if you haven't already had a chance to, uh, commit a report to the guy. I think everybody's turned one in. And we got Boys Girls Club, SRCA, Parks Commission. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you. Uh, Water Wastewater Commission. And if you have questions now, we can address them, or if you have any later, we can. Mr. Bailey's here. For I would like to address a couple of the items on this. Yeah, more, little Absolutely. More detail. Sure. Um, Tuesday last week, we had a bid opening for the 12-inch water line coming down to the treatment plant down onto uh, Highway 10. And a couple of years ago, we were really pleased with the great low bid we got going across Highway 71 out there. Well, this was the reverse. It was higher than our budget amount. Uh, the low bid was a KJX Incorporated, and they're out of, they're originally out of, I think, Missouri, I think it's Kansas City, but they have an office in Northwest Arkansas. <coughs> and Jeremy Short said they've done three projects already that Hobby's Rears did in Northwest Arkansas and Little Central Arkansas, and they've performed well. But our budget amount is 500000 the low bid came to 655000 So we've uh, voted for a budget amendment to increase that thing up to 700000 uh, looking over the government estimate and the low bid, 100% of the overage was due to one line item. Uh, well, it's, you think it's one-inch water line, it all be a 12-inch water line to cost, but actually there's a lot of other costs in there. And the 12-inch the water line, the estimate was 6 dollars a million foot, the low bid was 200 a million foot. All the other costs actually came in below. The, the fire hydrants and the valves and the connection and taps and all that stuff was, was less. But uh, that was over. And after the bid opening was over, completed, we uh, sat around and talked to Jeremy Shores and asked him why, and or what he thought was the reason why. He said, make the materials. He said, on all the projects, we're seeing material costs going up. And we had a long talk about some of the other projects. And he mentioned that there was a sewer project, sewer treatment plant down in Central Arkansas that came in more than double because of the pump, the increase on pump costs. And that's just a from uh, giving you a heads up that uh, where road this station doesn't include pumps. So we're probably going to have a healthy, potential healthy increase there. Um, so I'll just give you a heads up on that. I'll come up later for y'all's vote. Tomorrow we're having a special meeting of the commission to talk to James Port to uh, talk about acquiring area. And we'll be talking with them about acquiring area on the north side of Tinge Spur. From I don't know where our service area is, somewhere around uh, Dr. Bishop's or somewhere in there, so in the east, and not to Jacob Burger. We talked about that. Uh, and that's most of that's not the city limits. So that's something we'll have to discuss later. Any questions? What was the reason to give that 12 inch line in and out? The reason we need the 12 inch line is basically we have. You know, we had some problems with water flowing the other way. We did, we did not have enough water to down the road. The eight inch line comes in front of your house. Then about where Jay Hawker Lane is, you know where that is. From there it goes to about six inch line. So that six inch line is between everything east of town. And if you want water to come back towards the city, back to the city, which we'd like to do better, we need a larger line than six inches. It's just too small. And back here in the Great Freeze out last year, we had trouble getting, the only place we had any service interruptions was out at the Deerwood. So you can get the water out there. And so it's going to make it bigger. It's 100% necessary for the East Village. We would have some beer prop. Now we were planning to do this 
these bills came around. So it's, it, but we could not support these, these bills without this increased line. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Uh, I think Mr. Goldstein is here. I don't know if he wanted to speak on behalf of the Parks Commission or not. Oh. It's in the it's in the Okay. All right. Uh, next on the item, the agenda is a citizens forum. I have the paper. No one signed up tonight to speak, so we'll move on. But I do have um, a couple of announcements to make. I'll, I'll squeeze them in right here if it's okay. Uh, Greenwood High School girls basketball uh, is playing Jonesboro for state. That's the final. Championship game in Hot Springs, and that's Thursday. And I've been told by Mr. Councilman Terry that uh, he looks like he does because he's keeping that because he can't shave until they win the tournament. So, uh, right? I thought I'd put that out there. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the other thing is, is much more serious. Uh, I do want uh, everybody to remember the Crockett family. Uh, please, in your prayers, uh, such a devastating event this past week. Can't even imagine what they're going through. Please remember that family in your prayers. Uh, moving on, financial report, Mr. Marsh. In your packet on the left side of your folder, you will see the key financial data. I'm just going to go over that. Your whole report is on your tablets. The uh, cumulative growth for city sales and use tax 2022 over 2021 is 9.1%. That's uh, budgeted at 6%, so we're 3.1% 3 3 above our budget right now. Our county sales tax budgeted at a uh, growth of 10%. We're at right now 19.8% cumulative, which is 9.8% above budget, almost double. Our uh, advertising and promotion, I mentioned last month in January, there was a lot of December collections in January, which influenced the, uh, the cumulative growth numbers and that that would settle down over time. Well, we're seeing that settling down. AP tax growth above budget is, is went from 24.69, 24%, almost 25, to 6.75%. So it's, it's settled back down where it should be. Um, as far as the, uh, that's 6.75% uh, above our budget, which was 10%. Um, our cash flow year to date net increase is a $581,000. That is a percent increase so far for 2022 at 3.68% uh, growth in our cash. As far as our net income is concerned, we have a half a million dollars. That's year to date January, February number. That's for the two months. Uh, revenues of 2.5 million on expenses of 1.98. And our capital expense, we have spent through February, $94,768 in capital projects. February was a rather cold and uh, no one was going to get out and do any major capital projects. But so right now, our 2022% of budget capital expense is 1.61% of our 5 million eight. I guarantee you in the spring, and when some weather starts happening, there's a lot of projects that are eager to get working and get, get going. Uh, one of the things I did want to show you, I talked about, is on the next page that's in there, right behind this key financial data, there's a form that says Arkansas Valley Solar Impact Analysis. I told you that I would be sharing with you as we get the data what our savings seems to be trending right now as far as month to month for 2022. So what you see there is 2019, 2021, and 22's figures each of those years, for ABEC, which is the Arkansas Valley Electric Co-op, they're the only ones that are on our solar system right now that are generating any kind of a, a net credit. You see our costs were the 25,000 in 19, 26,000 in 20, 23,000 in 21, and that month we actually had November and December on net metering, so that's why that number is a little bit lower. But when it, what happens is, so, seeing it's solar bills, for the amount of kilowatt hours they've generated to send over to um, ABEC. So they sent in December, which really was November, December, because it's a mid-month, mid-month, 62,400 kilowatt hours. The good news is they did bill exactly as they promised us by contract, 57 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's a flat number, and that will stay for this year, and we're looking at a 3% escalation potential year after year. In the, the month of January of 2022, we were billed 46,800. As you know, that was a more time period. 
less sunshine, less generated um, electrical power to the uh, AVEC grid. So they build this 2667. You have to add that to our cost of our utilities because we are paying for that energy. We're just getting it back in a cheaper form from AVEC through a credit. And what you'll see on the bottom is February's number. We don't have February's bill yet. So we estimated that just at a simple average to come up with what we, what we believe would be a relatively reasonable percentage of the savings. For 2022, so far, the two months, compared to the two months, January and February of last year, we're 10.8%, almost 11% savings in our electric uh, expense, just for those two months. And what I showed you below on the line graph that you're looking at, you'll see the blue line is the um, what's being generated or what's being uh, passed through as far as kilowatt hours from ABEC. And what you see in the orange is what is estimated by uh, scenic solar, scenic hill solar, as what they would be generating. It's eight months of surplus uh, generation and four months of deficit generation. So January and February are deficit generation periods because of the lack of the sunshine and cloud, more cloudy days and so forth. So what you end up seeing is that 10.8% is really during the net uh, deficit period of time when we used a lot more kilowatt hours from ABEC than we are actually generating to them. But between March, April, May, June, July, and August, and September, and possibly even some of October, we're going to be in a surplus situation. So the if you were to take that 10.8%, you're going to notice that it's going to actually be less of what they projected as a savings, but we're not in our positive surplus credit generation. So I'm going to be giving you this report every month so you can see what that percentage is doing. Is it growing? Is it, are we actually realizing the savings? But right now, an 11% savings to the city during the net deficit uh, credit generation months is pretty good. And I, I'm not breaking that down by department, but I will tell you that uh, that you're going to be getting this as a city as a whole, so you can see what it does for the utilities. I'm hedging because I don't want to steal some thunder from this speech. This will play into what he's going to be telling. Thank you, sir. So if everybody orders eggs at a local restaurant, which I hope you do at a local restaurant, order them sunny side up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Doesn't get any better. Does not get any better. <laughs> So you know what you're in. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. There are no. Uh, well, I am glad to announce that there are no agenda additions. I know Council always appreciates that. So we will move right into uh, old unfinished business. Number one is planning and building uh, ordinance for dealing replacing ordinance 20-10 rule two. We move the mic for you, so everybody gets their steps in. <coughs> Oh, by the way, this is Sunny Bell. Solar. Oh, solar. <coughs> Go ahead. Hey, you're right. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better. Uh, Mayor Council, Mr. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the people are replacing the ordinance uh, 2010 mobile food pending uh, ordinance in the second reading. Uh, if you gentlemen have any questions, uh, Michael is here to answer any questions. He's the one that's put this together, him and uh, Mick McCain. Otherwise, I would appreciate the uh, uh, second meeting. <coughs> any questions for the gentleman? gentlemen?
Thank you. Good. I'm not late. You're not late. <laughs> well, place place is up. No, it's always with Drew. I'm sorry, you did it. You know what you're doing. Go ahead, Mr. Bell. Let, let me say one thing about the ordinance that we just put on for second reading. I did, and I don't know if I've got it, if he's going to pick it up yet, but I reached out to one of our vendors that own in town uh, for him to take a look at it. Leonard, did he come by and pick it up yet? As far as you know. So we want to get that in, in those some of those folks' hands to get their perspective on what we're trying to do and making sure that we're making it fair. So hopefully, hopefully we'll hear back from him. Uh, Chief, you want to, you want to, where is he? Chief tabled that today. Yeah, or he went through it. Actually, so sorry. You want to say anything? You want to ask questions about why it's on the wrong? Oh, okay. Okay. So, go ahead, Mr. Uh, the, uh, next thing on the, uh, agenda is the, uh, ordinance repeal and replacing ordinance, uh, 1809, the zoning regulations. Again, this is, uh, uh, ordinance that was put together by Mr. McKinney on uh, making sure that uh, our procedures are correct uh, in the planning commission uh, before uh, we submit things to the council. Uh, Mr. McKinney is here to answer any questions if you have any on this ordinance and he put this together. If not, I'd appreciate a motion for a second reading. All this struck out language, it's been, it's been rewritten or, or we're following that right? Yes. The amendment language. Shaded areas added struck outs. <coughs> Rather than trying to do a line by line strike out insert, we struck out the entire old section of the ordinance that's now replaced by the new language completely. Then replaced with the shaded areas you see here. The whole ordinance is on the tablets, but I ain't going to point in the one page. Just the part that you're seeing is the only part that you're seeing. New added or changed? Anything further from this uh, council? I'll make a motion we place it on a second. Second. Motion second. Place by reading second. What he said. Mr. Brown. Yes. 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 Yes.
Without further ado, it is by law that we uh, do this. So uh, this is the State of the City Address for Greenwood, Arkansas. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I would like to report to you that the state of our city is strong. A city is only as strong as the people who serve it. And I would like to thank our city council members, A.C. Brown, Ralph Meeker, Rod Powell, Daniel McDaniel, Tim Terry, Lance Terry, City Clerk Treasurer Charlotte Derry, and of course the City Attorney Mike Handy. Also I'd like to thank and recognize our Commission Chair, the Water Wastewater Commission Chair is John Bailey, Planning Chairman is Tommy Basham, our Perks Chair is Jill Goldstein, our AMP Chair is Mike McAllister, and also I'd like to recognize and thank our department heads who make things work. Fire uh, Chief Stuart Bryan, Police Chief Will Dawson, Street Department Chad Grouse, Water Tim Posey, uh, Water Wastewater Greg Cross, Finance Tom Marsh, our Parks Director Tammy Briley, Planning Department Mr. Sunny Bell, and our Human Resource Director and Executive Assistant Ms. Danielle Smith. Celebrating work anniversaries this past year, we had uh, several with Shannon Harris, who is Tom's assistant. She celebrated five years with the city. Tyler Lowe, five years. Kristen Falkenberry, 10 years. And Will Dawson, 20 years of service to the city. We thank you all. Department awards that were given out earlier this year were given to David Smith, who was Firefighter of the Year. Officer of the Year was Tanner Mathis. DWI Officer was Mr. Officer Josh Salee. Top Shot, Jason Fuller. Chief's Award was Neva Mahan, and the Mayor's Award went to Daniel Mahan, and Ambassador Award went to Officer Brad Hobbs. I would also like to thank, sincerely, all the city employees who have worked so hard through these trying times, and my family, especially my magnificent wife, for her support over the last eight years in office. I almost, I must also give a shout out to my two favorite grandchildren. Heath is here tonight and Madeline is in Seattle. They happen to be my only grandchildren, so they are my best of the best. I remember as a young boy, when I used to ride my bicycle down Main Street here in Greenwood, and how safe I felt. And even as our population has grown to 9,516 in the last census, we as a community have enjoyed the security provided by our police department. We were named the fourth safest city in Arkansas in 2021. And our fire department continues to serve our citizens, earning our city the recognition of being a firewise community for the 12th straight year and maintaining a class two ISO rating, which lowers individual and business insurance rates. Greenwood is a family. It's my family and it's our family. We celebrate our successes together, but we also endure our losses together. Our Bulldog family suffered several losses last year, including East Point teacher Megan Whitson, resource officer Joshua Morton, trap shooting coach Wendell Wallace, wrestling team member Garrett Harrelson, Retired Director of Buildings and Grounds, Earl Terry, along with Greenwood High School Principal Aaron Gamble and his son Landry. I first got to know Aaron when he was playing sports at the Boys and Girls Club. He started volunteering as a baseball umpire, and I can promise you he was one of the best that we had. He became our sports announcer. If you knew Aaron, you knew why. He had that voice. Aaron grew up Greenwood. He considered himself, he conducted himself with a mature, maturity beyond his years. Aaron carried that professionalism with him to his work at the school. And I was so excited to see other people recognize his greatness as he advanced. We are currently looking into naming a street after him at the school. All these losses have greatly affected our whole community, and we honor each and every one. Our schools have maintained their standard of excellence, even through the many challenges education has faced over the last year. Our school district was named number three in the state, 
number one best place to teach, and without a doubt, our students and staff have earned the title of the number one best school district for athletics in the state of Arkansas. When you have a good thing, people notice. When districts usually lose students throughout the year or retain the same numbers, Greenwood has gained about 160 students this year and about 140 last year. To accommodate this growth that will come along with the 188's new fighter jet program, the district found a way to build an additional elementary school without any cost to the Greenwood citizens. According to the school district, their new construction will be financed through current funding and will not require millage increase. Having another school should also alleviate some of the peak hour school traffic. Growing up Greenwood, <coughs> I remember seeing the first new developments go up and down, go up and down around town as the city expanded. Back then I didn't truly understand all that went into making that happen. Projects can take months, if not years, to be fully realized and funded. It takes coordination between private businesses, our planning department, the Chamber of Commerce, and the City Council to make progress possible. I would like to thank them all for being forward thinking and making Greenwood open for businesses and more builder friendly. In 2021, we had 77 permits for single family, multifamily, and commercial with a construction value of more than $5 million, including a Waffle House and several other new businesses. We are in the process of creating an ordinance to responsibly increase food trucks in a fair way which will encourage more entrepreneurs to set up shop within our city. Had a lady drop off sandwiches today. The Economic Development Committee and Chamber of Commerce are working with realtors to identify available commercial properties for prospective developers. The committee has begun the process of working with the City Council to develop a comprehensive annexation plan and strategy. To borrow a phrase from John F. Kennedy that he often used, a rising tide raises all ships. With the 188th training program I mentioned earlier, the Chaffee Crossing Movie Studio, and numerous other developments taking shape across the River Valley, we need to acknowledge, accept, and do the best of our ability to control our city's growth in a way that honors our heritage and prepares a path for future opportunities. One example is the home of a dear friend and classmate, Bobby Bean. Now, you knew him as Butch. He passed away last year, and his property is being <laughs> redeveloped into duplexes that will be named Bean Place, which grows our city in a manner that respects the past. Our expansion continues in 2022 with the bookends of the curve and East Village. One thing I like about bookends is that they are not permanent. They can be moved. We can expand and keep growing. One thing I love is to see hometown people investing in their city. The East Village will add 251 homes to our area. One thing I have learned is when we build infrastructure, projects follow which over time not only provides opportunities for our citizens, but grows our city's revenues. Our administration is the first to build infrastructure crossing 71 with installation of water lines going under the road. In 2022, we will be completing an east side water line project that will service future growth along Highway 10. And back on December the 10th, 2019, our citizens made a very bold statement I know Ms. Ferry was here when we celebrated that, along with others. Overwhelmingly voting for a traffic relief project on the east side of town. Real progress takes patience. And last year we took a major step in making two $250,000 payments to RDOT to move that project forward. On the state level, real dollars count. On the local level, it's people. Traffic Relief Project would not be possible without Dr. James Burgess, whose land the highway will be going through. Although
although he will not be able to see it completed, well, he will from afar. He laid the foundation for it to happen. And to quote Councilman Daniel McDaniel, we will be picking up the mantle to carry on his legacy. Dr. Burgess taught me the importance of truly listening to others and that people always use a need a helping hand, could use a helping hand and encouragement. And I try to use those lessons and taught me every day. The city ended 2021 with total cash funds of 15.8 million, reflecting an 18.3% growth. Last year, with a small investment in land by the city, Scenic Solar built the first phase of a $1.7 million solar power plant that will provide renewable energy to municipal buildings. The first year is projected to produce a significant savings of $41,651, which is 31.4% reduction in cost from 2021, as Mr. Marsh mentioned. The current 2022 approved city budget is $15.2 million with committed capital spending budget at $5.8 million consisting, <coughs> consisting of $3.46 million in new projects. The city of Greenwood's portion of the American Rescue Plan Act amounts to $1.95 million which is being distributed over a two-year period. First distribution of $975,000 was made in 2021. A second tranche of $975,000 is budgeted to be received in 2022. My hope is to use those funds to help pay for a new senior center in Bell Park. The center is a place where our seasoned centers, citizens, sorry, can gather a fellowship. It's hard to describe this as seasoned, isn't it? For fellowship and fun around meals or a card table. My dad used to play skip bow with the ladies at the center. We didn't know what skip bow was for a long time. He claimed to be not competitive, but when he would come home, he always knew who won. He was also afraid that the ladies might be peeking at his cards. So my wife made him a cardboard card holder and it still remains at the center today. One of the things the Senior Center does is that many people do not know about is the Meals on Wheels program. My friend Frank Atkins is the driver and they provide over 40 hot meals a day to homebound citizens here in our community. A new Bell Park master plan including the newly purchased 19 acres has been completed. The plan features a new splash pad. I never, never heard that word before, right? We've talked about it for 15 years. We're getting a splash pad. The plan features a new splash pad, among other amenities. Last year, the final phase of the promenade was completed. To give you an idea how long we've been working on that, this project was started when I was the parks director over a decade ago, and it took Tammy Briley to finally finish it. She also oversaw the improvements to the Greenwood City Lake parking area. A few years ago, several years ago, uh, we acquired a 1931 Parker Pony Trust Bridge from Hope, Arkansas as part of RDOT's historic bridge program. The bridge will serve as an entrance to the Lakes Trailhead. The Parks Commission voted to name that city Lake Trail after Michael was young. Michael left his mark on our hearts and across Greenwood and the River Valley through his brilliant architectural design. With all the work he was doing across the state, we were so blessed to have him as the chair of our economic development committee here in our town. He loved Greenwood. Anything that we wanted to do, anything we wanted to build, he was the first person we called for guidance and ideas. Michael helped create the city he wanted to live in. That's right. He donated the money to fund our first wayfinding sign that directs visitors to attractions and places of interest. Within the next couple of months, we'll have a total of four signs throughout the city. I worked hand in hand with Michael on the Ed Wilkinson Community Pavilion and found out that he respected everyone's opinion, even mine. 
Most importantly, Michael was my dear friend, as he was several of you, basically a brother to Chief Ryan. Most importantly, Michael was my dear friend, and, and he'll be missed by everyone who was lucky enough to ever have met him. With the leadership and determination of Danielle Smith, we are in the process of acquiring the final easement for the Phase 1 sidewalk project, 10 Spur, which begins at Denver Street and goes west along 10 Spur to Golden Years Retirement Center and then on the south side goes from the Waffle House east to Denver Street. We are very much looking forward to working uh, with RDOT and putting that out for the bidding process. One of my administration's objectives is to extend city services to as many citizens as possible. Working with water, wastewater, and street department, all departments, we are currently finalizing a sewer project on Bell Road. We are connect, concentrating on street improvements, including a possible partnership with the school district to extend the turn lane on Mount, Mount Harmony Road to help with traffic congestion. No one here has experienced that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Greenwood has a history of recovering from tragedies and struggles. From a complete rebuild of the town following the devastating 1968 tornado to emerging from the COVID pandemic. I have witnessed across generations the citizens of Greenwood step up, come together, and help one another. It is who we are as a people. Each of us doing our part to build on the previous generation's foundation. I want your kids, like me, to grow up Greenwood. After giving a speech at the ROTC Military Ball the other night, a young lady approached me with her ideas for the city. From my conversation with her and other students, one goal I have now is to create, and should have done it years ago, a Mayor's High School Advisory Council. Over the last three years, I have worked with high school intern Gabe Hobbs, who has impressed upon me the importance of our younger generation's voices. I want to continue to be available to all citizens of all ages. Greenwood has a rich cultural heritage. Another goal of mine is to further encourage arts and entertainment activities. I recently joined the River Valley Film Fest Society and I am exploring ways to bring more movies, live concerts, and visual arts projects to our city. We need to invest in developing our creative economy from painters, hairstylists, performers, and builders. As I've said many times, I firmly believe our community is at a crossroads of growth and development. We should be excited it's vital that we take action to ensure that we prepare for this growth and think outside the box. Working alongside developers and entrepreneurs, develop, doing all we can to provide them support and encouragement. Growth creates more opportunities for our citizens and more investments in our community that lead to more choices. Meaning people will not have to leave town to eat or shop which ends up keeping more revenue locally. We need to be proactive and prepared. About six months ago, I placed a quote from Philippians 2.4 in our council room facing myself and the other members. It's right above me. It reads, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Over the last eight years, I've learned that if we all agree with each other on every decision, then nothing significant would ever be accomplished. Our city ordinances and our resolutions are made stronger through our deliberations to resolve our differences. We all love Greenwood, and we all have the common goal of improving our city and making it better than we found it. I look forward to the opportunity to continue to serve what has become my family, the citizens, and the city of Greenwood. Thank you, 
and God bless you. Time. Who got the time?
question is, you know, with a business like that, somebody has an, uh, an Airbnb, would that be required to have a permit, a city permit? Is that? If we find out, then yes. I mean, that's considered a business, you know. Yeah. Not currently. I mean, I know there are some that exist. Obviously, they're not, they're not licensed. There have been some areas easier in town. Yeah, and there are. There are. There are. Yeah. But none of them have a privilege license? Not that I know of. Yeah. Well, that's what I Second to adopt. 
Yes. 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 How many of those units are rented out? 
Two, I think, now. Yeah. Three. I think Two, three. Soon to be three. Soon to be three. I think our guys from Canada finally showed up last week while I was on. And they're ready. They'll be three. I'll make a motion to adopt that resolution. With, with the change. With the change. With the change. Second. You have a motion and a second to adopt with the change. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Baker? Yes. Thank you, sir. Number 11 is uh, resolution to amend budget for Iron Bridge inspection. Let me give you my version of this, and I think Tom's got, got the details on it over there at his desk. Uh, this is the bridge, referred to as the Hope Bridge, that uh, we hope to get on the lake one day. <laughs> but we obtained, it's what I mentioned in the speech, uh, we got this thing back in 09, I believe. I did when I was a parks director. Sonny knocked on my door, sat beside me, and said, hey, you want a bridge? I'm like, sure. So called our dot. Long story short, we have an iron bridge that was delivered to us. We were supposed to have to go get it. Uh, came out of Hempstead County in Arkansas, at Hope, Arkansas. Uh, it's 1931. Camel, not Camel, but the Trust, what I mentioned in the uh, speech, I believe. And it's been laying over behind the street department since 2009. I'm ashamed to say. Uh, but I'm not ashamed to say that I'm trying to resurrect it, resurrect it I suppose, finally and place it as we as we said we were going to. Uh, Michael DeJong, again, drew this in. Uh, if you go to the boat ramp that Tammy got all fixed up for, she go to the boat ramp and immediately to your right, that water inlet that goes to Mount Harmony, we want to cross right there with this historical bridge, which would be the, uh, the trailhead of our walking trail as it is now. You have to go down in a little ditch, go out literally out on Mount Harmony, and go in another ditch into, onto the trail. So this would be a, quite an addition to our, our trail system. And it was promised to our doc that when we adopted it, if you will, that's what we, we would do with it. I'm asking the council to consider getting up something we had, had budgeted in our budget. Uh, you guys passed the budget with the AV system. We've been talking about that for a couple of years now, uh, new audio video system. But uh, I'd like to utilize that those funds. Uh, I have a at a cost estimate from the Holmes Erection and the company in Fort Smith. They've already been down three times to look at the bridge as it, as it is, piled up, if you will. Street Department, appreciate them, and I think the water guys got out there and cleaned everything up. It had trees that literally growing through it. So it's, you can see it, but you can't identify the pieces well enough to know the engineer needs to see those pieces laid out. Uh, this company that I'm talking to, and. Uh, that Tom has put in here up to 19650 would it pay that company to come down? And that's up to three days if it took them. It's so much per day. You probably have that over there, but uh, they suspect they can do it in two days, which wouldn't cost quite that. I think it's about six a day. And, um, you may have that. But anyway, it, just to spend up to that much to get this thing laid out, I know uh, Council McDaniel has already spoken to, if I, if I can say that, Randy Coleman, who has maybe even volunteer or help us uh, take a look at this thing. This company, this, this Holmes Erection, actually is also the company, and he, he, as he came down to look at it, he said, who's going to put it together and move it out? Who, I hire, I'm hiring them to move it, if you will. He said, who's going to put it together? And I'm looking at him like, well, that would be great. He goes, he said, we can do that. So I think he's a young man, I think he sees it as a tinker toy project and thinks he can do this, so I think he can too. We, we, have, we have all the specs on it that we got like Marta back in the day, Tammy does, so I, I'm excited about this project getting off the ground. And this, is, you know, this is just the beginning of the cost. If you, I don't have an estimate of the total cost of placing this across the bridge. It's a 90 foot long, 90,000 pound bridge. Uh, I believe the stretch across there is approximately 150 feet, so we're going to have to have some approaches on both sides. So we're looking for those guys over there. He's going to be some, um, Chad's excited already, but uh, about something like that. But it's going to be a it's going to be a multi-phase project for sure. I'm going to put a little committee together. Uh, Dan McDaniel, I believe, uh, Parks Department certainly be involved. Uh, Sonny, Chad, uh, uh, Randy Coleman, and you can talk about the other if you like about money. But I'll leave that in a minute. Now, so. okay. Okay. We've, we've, I have mentioned before the uh, mm -hmm. family uh, has committed funding uh, for uh, a project like this. Um, we talked some about the, the old iron 
Pine Ridge that's across the lake doing that. Uh, that's a pretty expensive endeavor. I think she got a new quote. Don't know that any of us will, you know, very difficult to get to, lots of stuff involved. Uh, this is something we actually could do, you know, relatively soon if you compare it to that project. Um, I always forget the number, but it keeps, it, it kind of keeps itching up with the number. You told me a half a million. No, you know. <laughs> I think it's 100,000. I think it's what you said, yeah. Is that right? The last time we talked um, to you. So, uh, you know, they've committed $100,000 to the project, so that's a pretty good deal. But, you know, we don't know what we don't know right now until we figure out some of these things out. I'm sure. I mean, I was, I was, Excited to hear and, and talk to a gentleman standing there. There's probably other companies that can do this. I don't know, but he's looking at it and he goes, "Oh yeah, we can we can assemble this and haul it out there." I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I want to clarify on this so you know what this is really saying is that we have twenty six thousand dollars budgeted for the AV. I'm not removing that. I'm not asking you to remove that. I'm asking you to use up to up to nineteen thousand over a portion of the amount that's budgeted for AV, leaving the rest of it in there in case something were to happen maybe for the audio portion of what we have, and that would need to be replaced. The money is still there for AV, and we'll deal with the uh, what we're going to add to that in next year's budget. So that's why it says in Section 1, funding of the project to come from a portion of the funds currently budgeted for the upgrading of AV equipment to the council meeting. What about the team grand for the trolley? That's still in there. It's still there. Uh, I'm almost came to you with that request, and, and if we need it, I'm, I may do that for sure. Because that's not going anywhere. So. That goes away. It can shift to the AV. Now this 19650 mm -hmm. is to tear the bridge apart. Inspector. It is already apart. It's laying. There's two. If I it, yeah. Well, it's clear now. So it's it's literally down near the creek bank down there. The two sides, if you will, picture 90 foot long by whatever, are together. That those things are laying on top of each other. All the cross beams are laying in there amongst it, and everything that goes with it. Some of it is, I mean, it's easy. I mean, I'm not an engineer by any means, but I can walk over there and say that that beam's not going to work. There's some of them that it's damaged. Now, they, when they removed that bridge, it was in. I mean, they were driving over it. Which we can't put it back on track if we don't want to. But it was underneath concrete in a, in a roadbed. So what we will be doing is replacing it, putting it back up, and then having to um, floor it, if you will, with some other material. So there are, of course, the, the, the money that you just asked about is just to get it pulled out. They're going to bring cranes down to lift it, set it over here. Hopefully we have the room. I think we do have down there for them to spread this thing out and inspect it, and then get Mr. Coleman to take a look at it and tell us what, what we're up against. Or what? Is safe. So there'll be other fees, obviously, to get it all out. Oh, there. absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is this is not to get it out. It's not really a flat, straight shot from here. Mm -hmm. No. And what are the fees to, I guess, treat the steel? Or whatever. I don't need to re you know, re 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 blast it or whatever. Yeah, we're not going to do that, in my opinion. Uh, now, if if we could, I'm going to be talking to several people. Uh, Chad provided me with with the folks that redid, uh, sandblasted, and did the bridge over on Coker Coker Street. So, in order, to, if we even painted the bridge, we have to get permission from RDOT, OSHA, I'm not OSHA. EPA. Yeah. Uh, Health Department. All kinds of people. That's in the agreement that I signed in 2009. So, but my opinion is, I mean, it's a, it's old. We want it to be look old. I mean, my opinion is 1931. I don't want to, I don't want to write shiny. So, unless it needs something to keep it from rusting further, then, then uh, my intentions are hopefully. But, I'll, but I'm going to get in touch with the folks that uh, Chad gave me to investigate. Now, I, certainly, as I said a while ago, I want you to understand this is it's kind of like Mr. Powell says when you apply for a grant and sign a blank check. But we, we can do this and find out it's a million dollars to get it out there and set it up the way it's got to go across that. And then we might decide to do something else with it or not do anything or set it up and have, have sell tickets to see it where it, where it stands. But, uh, Definitely will be more cost involved. And he's not, he wasn't really willing to give me a cost estimate on the, on the moving, putting it together, or anything until he found out what was needed to, to add to it. Yes, ma'am? Yes, Sir. Sure. <clears throat> Johnny. 
Yes, please. Um, I just wanted to say a few things about not this bridge, but the old iron bridge. <clears throat> the mayor likes to one-up me sometimes on bridges, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you guys know that I am still applying for the grant with RDOT to put the bridge inside of the old iron bridge. <clears throat> this is just another project, another piece of the connecting the trails at the Grim and City Lake. And you have that information in there. I just didn't want you to think we had disbanded the old iron bridge for this one. There's two bridges out there. This one that Michael had drawn in, and I'll get you a copy of that um, if you've forgotten how, where it's going to be. But I just wanted to let you know that I'll be running to you um, um, a resolution to okay me to go out and, and get a, possibly an RDOT grant for the old iron bridge. And like I said, in your um, packet there, you should have the information on the new numbers for the old iron bridge, 540,000. Well, it's it, it it's kind of misleading because again, like the mayor was talking about with the bridge that he already has, we already have an old iron bridge, but it's gonna it's gonna have to there's gonna be a bridge inside of that one and then two approaches. So it's it's really three small bridges. Yeah, it, it's just the approaches to us. I mean, yeah. same as can be. Correct, and, and what a tremendous thing, Michael, and you know, we're, we're doing a consistent thing with me, just to, to, to cross the 31 bridge to get on the trail to go down to the, I can't remember the, day, the other bridge, you know, the four times. <laughs> yeah. quite and we a, have quite a new, draw. We have a new old picture of the old iron bridge, if you guys are interested, I have it in my office, um, that Ms. Bell came up with that shows the bridge and the supports, I guess, that the, the concrete or the rock supports and how deep. how deep <laughs> that ravine was before we made it a lake. It is, <coughs> it is unreal. I'm definitely not deep. set my course. No, you're, yeah, it's, it's really deep. But anyway, I, I just thought that was pretty cool that you guys might want to see that and for the engineers to see just how deep the supports <coughs> for that old line bridge are. They're way deep even the support for one of the approaches on the east side. So anyway, we're just, we're still trying to make it all come together and um, I'll be looking um, at getting that um, area, which it will be actually the end of Stewart Court that actually runs down to um, the Old Iron Bridge, getting that cleared out so people can see the Old Iron Bridge and we can kind of see what it's gonna need as far as gravel if I were to get Awarded the grant, and we can move forward with the project. Did you say something was included in our packet about that? There should be, yeah, it, uh, it was in the Maybe. emails that you I gave you earlier. Thanks for the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's that's what we're asking for on this resolution. And again, make sure that uh, I think everybody knows that this is just the beginning, if you will, to the iceberg of what in, in the, the, the committee that I would put together. Mentioned a while ago, we will report back and come up and tell you what's going on with this. I make a motion we adopt that resolution. Second. I have a motion and second to adopt. Brown? Yes. Maker? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Contrary? Yes. Lester? Yes. Here. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. All right. We have gotten uh, down to the end. Department reports. Questions from the council. Several of them are here. See anybody you want to pick on? I don't know if this is for a department head, but you always brought a good point about the old bridge and the depth of the ravine. And we always talk about the lake depth being about eight feet average down that way. The Art City Lake. Not that much. No, we we've, we've raised with the with the three foot dam. That's raised that to about eleven feet. Eleven. It's it's thirty one feet deep at the dam. Right. And then well, I don't know what the actual average is. I'm gonna say ten to eleven feet dam. with with the inflatable dam. <clears throat> well, always last that's because 
once upon a time we were trying to figure out how we're going to do some more water. And every time I said, well, I would dig the lake out, I always got thought I was stupid that you shouldn't do that because it's be a big hole in it and it's not real deep and blah, 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 blah. And evidently used to be a big, deep ravine. A bunch of stuff that's filled in over time since we dammed it up. I was curious. I just wondered how much water we might actually get in that lake if we ever took the bottom out of it six or eight feet. The, I've had divers in it and they said about four foot. It's and it's loose, so there's no telling. I, you know, I've even talked about dredging and everything. You can dredge the, dredge the ocean, you can dredge the river, but you don't dredge a pond and you don't dredge a lake. Right. Because if it gets a leak, then it's too long. I talked about it. Tom Cuthbert was here, he remember all of these things. Uh, back when we had the water committee years ago, uh, they talked about this, the lake silt in and how much it was and all that. But we went, we did some research and we actually had a company come down here and meet with us about dredging the lake. They had these dredge machines and all that stuff. There's a lot of stumps in there and that kind of deal, but the dredge point also, when you start dredging the lake, it was an expensive thing. And they've always said you can't afford to dig a lake. You know. well, we have One of the big problems is if you dredge that and pull that stuff off the bottom, you've got to take that somewhere and let it dry out and turn it, crumble it, and all that. You want to go pull the ground. We can fill in a bunch of those four ground problems. I don't wonder if it's so low, we, we can drive miles. You know, you can almost get down the bridge on one of those so <coughs> low water. So no, you still can see the, the, the low water, if you will, low water right. bridge are out there from the boat. Okay, anything else for any department head? Somebody own a business in here that wants a thousand spent in it? So we might really want to look into that. <laughs> um, you also see that Airbnb owners have a little bit more style to them than the typical landlord. So they'll come in and they will restore an older property. 
and make it beautiful versus demolish it. Mm -hmm. And so it also, Airbnbs create a walkable community for Greenwood. So just something to think about. I don't know where you guys are, are, are on that. I'm willing to serve in the real estate mindset for that. Um, that's it. That's all I can get off my heart because it would, yeah, yeah. It would grow our community. Absolutely. Go ahead. We just wanted to make sure that, that we were collecting the right amount of tax for lodging facilities. And, and when you said, did you say that those folks, those owners are style or style? Casey Craig, our <laughs> home control officer, has one. Yeah. I, I don't think you can oh, use him. Yeah. He, 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 he does have an Air, Airbnb, but it's just yeah. outside of St. Louis. So he stays busy yes. a lot with him. So My sister really, stayed along on Main Street. That was nice. Really nice. And who did? My sister. Was oh, okay. The house there by school? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's who I was thinking about while ago, but I couldn't remember. I'm just searching up for one yeah. adult on uh, Friday night. There's two in town. Thank you. Thank you. Can you mention the speed zone? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we visited recently with Alpha Packaging here in town about a project they're doing. They're adding on. You know, it's also awesome. always good to see our our industry building on. They're adding building out there. And during that conversation with with the Stacks, uh, it came up a couple of concerns that they have and 251 is going in just past uh, alpha packaging and so it was suggested by Mrs. Steck that we somehow wondered if there was a way to reduce the speed limit out on that in, in the town due to 251 I call it 251 it's East Village and, uh, and alpha packaging coming to go on all that so uh, Danielle of course called as she always does for me and talk to Chad Adams with the RDOT and request put in a request for them to look at that situation. And they were really quick about it, got it done, but we only got half of what we wanted. We asked uh, for the speed limit to be lowered to 45 at Chisholm Chisholmville Road. Road and because that would take in 251, it would make sure our packaging is in and out good, golf course, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and pardon? Skyview, because they, they complained to me today about in Skyview. Parking, right? Okay, so what we got was a quick response, but they moved it up to Country, Country Club. Club Drive Road, whatever that is, going up to the country. So we only got half of it. It didn't include 251. So we're gonna we're happy about it. The sign's already up, but we're gonna go back to them later when you guys start really coming and going with dump trucks and everything else, and say, hey, this is this could be an issue here. So uh, I was pleased with the response, but that's the. It's got to use the road going the road road the side. Side. just past yeah. the golf course. Where Grand Golf yeah. Course Grand. goes to the side. Right outside of the city limit just now. Yes, first road outside. Yeah, that's right. So it was by our request to lower it, so uh, safety well, issues. It's not 45 right now? Pardon? Well, it's not no, it's 55. 45 is at what's the next road? Daniel, you're always good at this. Where is it right. starting? Forest Parkway. Forest Parkway is where it begins. 55 up to that, then it's 45 in the town, right? Or it was. Mm -hmm. Now it's 50. Or 50. I'm sorry. Yeah, but now they move it back. Sir? It lowers as you approach the bridge, but out there it goes just past Apple Factory. Yeah. That's right. And I turn around at the new development today, and it's not fun to out there. So I can see yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be dangerous for the trail. So we're going to we're gonna ask them again a little bit. Water don't stop in between. <laughs> Anything else? Where we have the sidewalks and compare. Were you not listening to the speech, sir? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Thursday, I believe it is. I understand. Thursday is it? Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, 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 11 o'clock. We have here. That's courthouse here in Greenwood. You're right. Right. You know. <laughs> right. Uh, we're, we're ready to rock and roll. We just need that stamp of approval. Our dot needs that as a as a recognized instrument of approval. Yeah, it's you know, we feel real confident we're going into that hearing. That we've already put to catch up or everybody up. We paid twenty five hundred dollars for an appraisal. The appraisal re rebuilt that property with that little section was worth thirty two hundred dollars. 
So we we have about five grand, and that money is sitting in the court. I believe waiting uh, for the for the hearing for the judge to say this is how it is, and that money will go to the. the well, she's just going to say that she finds a public purpose for it. Right. And she will schedule a hearing at a later date to determine the fair market value of the property. Oh, okay. It's either eight or ten. I, I think it's I think it's ten foot. Over here. 
I don't see her. Or just something we're hoping, or just something we're to do. It's not required at all. They're just asking if we want to, if we want to do that. For bicycles and bicycles and yeah. <laughs> I don't. On a bypass? I know. <laughs> I was shocked to, to see it or hear it. So I thought I asked her, I said, You sure you have the right job number? Greenwood, Arkansas. She said, Yeah. So, I don't know why would you want to put that. Uh, you know, if if, if, if ten if the widening of ten but or if anything develops in the future with new things, people we don't want to roll. I mean we're gonna she's gonna try to get she is going to get to the lake from here. So that's the that's the goal, you know. Are we thinking about trying to develop a lot of the new bypass in Not that it can. Not across Burgess's land. Yeah. From the wide is definitely an option. I'm hoping for sure. that. My, my first initial uh, thought was that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.